Can, can, can you say something, Rabbi, so you're up on the screen? Hey, good day, everybody. Welcome back live from Jerusalem with Rabbi Chaim Goldberg is Genesis class. I'm pretty sure we'll be joined maybe by Lee Fogel as well, sharing more about British Shalom. Now, Rabbi Goldberg assures me we're going to have a much more orderly class. I think he's got the uh, chat box in there. He's going to take things in order. You know, my attitude is is just this. A lot of people aren't as loud-mouthed as me, and uh, they're shy. And they have important questions, too. So we want to make sure that everybody gets an opportunity, an equal opportunity, to ask the questions of the rabbi. They need to ask. So I'm going to liaison for those online uh, on YouTube and Facebook and all the social media channels. So if you got any questions out there, feel free to post them in YouTube and, and uh, uh, Facebook, and I'll try and get them to the rabbi in order uh, in courtesy, but let's just jump right in and see how the rabbi's doing today. Rabbi Goldberg, always a pleasure. I so appreciate your classes and everything you and uh, Brit Olam do. So, your class, sir. Okay, first of all, good evening from Jerusalem to all of the people in the world, especially for all of us who are sitting here um, tonight. And thank you, Dan, very much for this uh, liaison that you're doing. We also opened the chat of the of this meeting, okay? We um, we are sure that the chat is working. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate. Put them on the chat and everything done is going to reorganize and reorder. So we'll have the time also to ask uh, questions or something like that. A um, few notes before we start, because today we had a very interesting day. Um, just now I finished another more than 20 people speaking Spanish. We did this, uh, um, this Beitim, okay? The thing that the people are uh, declaring not only a self-declaration, but also in front of uh, three rabbis. And we finished, it was, uh, we were there, there were there more than 20 people from the Spanish department. Uh, we are going to do something similar to the English department again. And I'm inviting everybody um, who didn't do that yet. That is, uh, he can do that and I will publish, we will publish everything, we will publish the dates and everything else. It will be um, straight after, in the, in the middle of January. So this is one thing. Another thing that happened this week, and it was very um, surprising, I will say very surprising, is that um, um, we finished to translate Brit Shalom to Chinese language. Now, the Chinese language, it's, it, it's only not a million, one billion people who are waiting for this Bridge Alone book, okay? Uh, so the people who, um, who translated everything, what we didn't know, we spoke with them, and we suddenly heard that there, are, there is a, a big community, big, it's a, it's a community of 100 people, now, because the Chinese are not allowing them to do any secular, any um, religious things, so they have small groups of WhatsApp, only six, seven people in each group. Yeah. And they have more than 100 people there in those groups. Uh, so today we had the first lesson to the Chinese community. And uh, this was also very um, uplifting to feel this, that uh, yeah. we are managing also to come and to have, uh, we'll say, to touch the Chinese uh, um, people. And we know that there is a lot of uh, thirst, thirsty to the Hebrew tradition also in the Chinese. It's a bit more complicated there because it's a very hard uh, um, government, what they're yeah. doing there. But uh, we will manage, we will manage like we did in everywhere, in everywhere else in the world. So those are the two main things that uh, happened uh, in this come in the last week. We also started uh, to translate the bridge along to Italian, and uh, we are continuing on with this mission. Also, the we finished also. By the way, this week we finished also the bridge along in French. So now we have already five languages, and we almost finished also in Portuguese. Yeah, I think another two weeks we will finish also in the Portuguese. Um, our mission is to translate Berit Shalom mm -hmm. to more than 60 
languages. <laughs> so it will be for everybody. Um, so uh, we are, we have, uh, we started. We have only we have already six languages, and we have already um, finished six languages, and we almost uh, you know we're continuing with more six languages. But at the end, we will have all those languages will be um, published. So those are you know things that are happening also in the in the Nahad World Center uh, organization. And, uh, and by the way, we're also taking out, um, we, call this, we call this a shaliach. Uh, we're sending someone to live in the communities in India and uh, for a year, and there to do a lot of work inside, okay? Inside, to, to live in India. So um, this is also something uh, new that we're going to do in another two months. Just oh. that you will know a bit, realize a bit what's happening in, in the Noah Hyde World Center. Um, and uh, yesterday I spoke a bit about the differences that we have between the mentioning the Shabbat from one side and um, holding the full Shabbat on the other side. Uh, we spoke about this yesterday, so I won't go about this again, but we see how other organizations uh, lining up, I will say, with things that we are saying. Uh, we have nothing against any other Jewish organizations who are dealing with the Noahite, um, but we're inviting everybody to do a lot of cooperation. I think that cooperation is always good for everybody. So those are only a few notes of things that are happening in the Noahite World Center. Now let's dive inside and let's learn a bit Genesis, and hopefully later on also we are going to learn and to Go deeper on for the Brit Shalom. Daniel, good to see you. We see you from time to time. Rabbi, um, yes. I, I hate to uh, mention this, but the chat is, is disabled in your uh, yeah. Zoom room. No, yes, no. and I, I don't have the ability to turn it on. So, See, see for a moment, I'm writing here something and let me know if, it's, if you got it, okay? No, it's showing as disabled. Is everybody else seeing? Oh, there we go. Oh, now we, yeah. Up. Now, please try also to say something in the chat. I think that uh, we organized it to be open, so I don't know if it's not open. I don't know what to do. I will we'll fix it for next time. Um, we can read you, but you can't read any, nobody else is able to chat. Okay, so we'll fix this up. Um, this week again, we'll organize it. I don't know what happened to this uh, to the chat. Um, if someone have any questions, we'll give a spare of time for questions and we'll see how to do this in the best way. Um, let's share the screen and let's dive inside to the um, to this to the Bible. I'm reminding everybody that the Bible is not just a history book. The Bible is more than that. It's the words of God. And we are learning what God has to say to us um, and what is his will. This is a very important difference that we have between, I will say, the secular world, what we saw last week, and the religious world. The secular world is saying that the world doesn't have any, um, even if someone created this world, let's say, let's call him God who created this world, but he doesn't have any connection with the human being. He doesn't care for the human being. And the human being is supposed to have their own flow in this uh, world, what to do and how to do. Um, the Hebrew nation had the experience of speaking with God in the Ten Commandments, but not only that, after that, for almost 1,200 years, the Hebrew nation had prophets that spoke with God and gave the words of God to us. And this is to understand what God wants from person, from man in this world is very important because it's not that he created men and left him alone. He created men and he wants to have discussion with men. We said more than that. We said that God created men in this world and he wants men to manage, to do the right things. This is why he is telling him what exactly he, is, he wants from him. I will say it in a very uh, 
low level, okay? It's not very deep level, it's very low level. When you're buying a washing machine, for example, so you're also getting instructions how to use the washing machine. It's not reasonable that God who created this world created men with all of his complicity, you know, all these very complicated things that you have inside, um, the body side, the soul side, the free will side. In the body, we have all sorts of uh, things. And he didn't give him the structure, how exactly to get connected with God, how to use this machine in the right way, if I will call the man as a machine. It's not a machine because he have, he's a person, okay? He has personality. It's not only a machine here. But God wants us to have relationship with God. And the way that he spoke with us was through this Bible and through the prophets. Now, we don't have the prophecy already for 24 centuries, but we have few sages, okay, the sages of Israel, who hold the chain and explaining those things in a way that not only explaining us stories, what happened in the history, but also explaining to us what exactly is the will of God in behind the scenes of those words. And despite, or if you will compare this to other religions in all sorts of ways, I'm, I'm very careful with my words. I want to honor everybody, but we need to know that. Um, the only, not religion, the only nation who is saying that we have connection with God and we can speak with God and we have relationship with God is the Hebrew nation. And this is what we're trying to understand in those verses. So please, let's continue on with the things that we, uh, where we stopped last time, okay? Last time we spoke about verse number four, but flesh with its soul, its blood, you shall not eat. We spoke about this, that this is one of the most important um, uh, obligations, so important mitzvah that God gave us, that we are not allowed to eat from a living limb, and why? This is the opening stage, the beginning, how to control ourselves as human beings. We are not animals. The animals are eating when they're angry, hungry. We are we're having a bit of, you know, waiting with ourselves a bit, and we spoke about this last week. Let's continue on to verse number five. It's a bit hard verse. Please down, read verse number five. But you're... Your blood of your souls, I will demand an account from the hand of every beast, I will demand it, and from the hand of man, and from the hand of each man, his brother, I will demand the soul of man. Uh, there's also an explanation for that, just a moment. Uh, please read also verse number six, and then we'll try to explain what's happening here. Whoever sheds the blood of man through man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God he made man. So there is here something with a moral understanding. The end, this is the end of this uh, moment. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Just say something. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, yeah. fine, fine, fine. Excellent. I closed everybody else for a moment. Okay. Dan, also, you need to speak from time to time, so be aware. Okay. Yeah. Um, there is something here that is related for um, with the moral understanding. For in the image of God, he made men. This is very important because those two verses that we read now are saying something very important. Life are very, very honorable. Okay, it's something that we need to be very careful with. It's not that we giving life, the one who is giving life is God. And therefore he have the obligation. We need to be careful not to take life of others. It is so important from time to time I'm asking myself, let's go for example, to what is happening today in our life, in, 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 in our environment, okay? We know this ISIS. ISIS in, in, in a few places in the world. 
that in the name of God, they are taking life. I don't know from where they took it. I really don't know from where they took it. In those verses we see just the opposite. It's not in the name of God we can take life. In the name of God, we need to uh, be careful as much as we can not to take life from others. More than that, because God is giving us the permission to eat animals, we might have thought that the animals could also eat men. So this is how it starts here, okay? But your blood of your souls, I will demand an account from the hand of every beast, I will demand it. Beasts are not allowed to eat people. And if they will do that, God will demand those souls that they ate or those life that they took. We have here some sort of hierarchy what exactly who is above and who is underneath. The above is men and underneath is animals. We have here some sort of, um, I will say, um, a chain, okay? That the animals are eating from the leaves and the people are eating animals, but it's not equal. And this is one of the ways how to start to learn how to live here in this life. This was one of the problems that brought the, the flood. And it's all starting with the understanding that God, God is giving life. By the way, this is something very equal, regardless if you're a Noahide, um, someone who doesn't recognize God, um, a Jewish person, or a priest, or whatever you are. Also the animals, God is giving life to this world. This is something that we can't, I will say, um, we can't ignore and we can't uh, deny. There is a very interesting um, story in the Midrash that is saying that uh, when God, in the last day of Moses, God said to Moses, um, that's it. You're supposed to give me back your soul and you need to die. And Moses said to God, no, no, I don't need, I don't want to, I don't want to. And they started an argument. God said to him, you must do that. And Moses said, no, I'm not going to do that. And Moses gave a lot of claims. Why God's not supposed to kill him, to take his soul, to, to, that he won't die. He said to him, you know, I gave the Torah to the world. So God, uh, God answered everything. And then in a moment, um, there was uh, something that uh, God said to Moses, you need to die because you killed the Egyptian in Egypt. You remember the story that he, called, he, he killed one of the Egypt. He went out to his brothers and he killed one of the Egyptians who did a lot of the hard things. So this is why you need to, to die. So Moses told God, I need to die for that. You killed all the Egyptians in the water, in the sea, in the, in the sea when the Hebrew people passed the sea, and you killed all the Egyptians. So God said to him, yes, but I have the power to bring them alive back. And you don't have the power to bring alive back the one that you killed. This is something, it's very deep what it's being said there. The understanding is that God have the ability to give life and to take life. This is only God who's supposed to do that. It's also, it's also for the, what we call the court, okay? If someone is killing someone else and we have evidence for that, so the court, or I will say, and the court have also the ability to take back soul against soul, or life compared to life. This is very important. This is also written down here, okay? Um, but this is, a court is getting, I will say the authority from the people, the court is getting the authority from the people in the, in the in, in, from the, I will say, from the country. It's not, they're getting, they're not getting the, um, the authority from themselves. The country is giving them the authority in some sort of cases to kill someone else. 
we know that there's all sorts of ways that they're doing it. Um, another thing that we need to see here, okay, because it's very um, complicated verse, uh, it's also written down that God is saying that from the hand of men and from the end of, how oh, it's written down here, from the end of each man, his brother, God is going to demand that no one will kill someone else. So, okay, fair enough. We know all of those things. And now we're finding an interesting verse in verse number six, where God is saying, whoever, just a moment, let me, oh, okay. Um, whoever, whoever um, sheds the blood of men through men, shall his blood be shed. Now, what he's saying here, basically, there are two things that we can realize that we saw along history. First of all, Man inside men is, for example, when someone is doing, um, how do you call it, Dan? Um, when a woman have a, a baby inside herself, okay, inside right. a woman, and she's giving, um, how do you call it? I forgot the name. Birth? Like, abortion. Abortion, yes, exactly, Perfect. exactly, abortion. Okay, this is what you did down here. The blood of a man through men. What is the blood of men through men? In Hebrew, it's really said, Shofech dam adam ba'adam. When someone have inside, the only time that you have inside yourself, the man inside men, is a woman who have the baby inside her. And when she's doing a version, this is what you did down here. Be careful. The first 40 days that maybe you can do that, you need to ask all the things, but Basically, you're not allowed to do that. But there's also another time. If you remember, all of you, um, the, there was something very cruel in the, in the old Greeks and also the old Rome, Romes, where they took people that uh, got punished to, be, to die. Okay, they did all sorts of sins that they decided they're supposed to die, those people. And instead of killing them, they threw them to the animals, that the animals will kill them, okay? And everybody went, came to see this, they came to see. They starved the lions and they threw three or four men to the lions and they were all in the stadium, saw this big thing, how they're killing, um, how the lions are killing those people that were supposed to uh, die. And what it's, saying, what it's being said here that be careful. If you're deciding to kill someone in the court, in the right way, you need to be careful to kill him yourself as men. Men supposed to kill men. You know why? Because in the image of God, he made men. This is why you need to respect men when you're killing someone. If you came to, to do this in the right way, we're finding something similar in a... Deuteronomy, where it says that when you're hanging someone, you're not allowed to leave him hanged, hanged um, at the night. Only on the day that you killed him, he's hanged, and then you're um, burying him. Why is that? And our sages are referring to this, uh, to this uh, verse. And the reason is very simple, because think about this, that you have twins, and one of the twins is the king, and everybody likes him and everything else, and the other one, they are similar twin, twins, and the other one is a fifth that is doing a lot of bad things. And at the end, you know, this fifth also killed someone, and they punished him, and they decided that he's supposed to, to die. And they will kill this, you know, um, soulmate of the, of the king. And they will put him um, yeah, on a tree that everybody will see that they killed this man. And anybody that will pass, they will say, ah, they killed the king. So therefore, all of us in the image of, of God, therefore, we need to be very careful with men. We learn here, I will say, the moral um, way 
how to behave to someone else. It's not only that me, I, want that people will give me space to live here. I need to remember that also the next one who is sitting next to me is also in the image of God. And therefore, I need to respect him. I need to give him place. I need to give him space. I need to give him um, help. I need to help him to stay alive, not to bother him, not to nudge him. This is with my neighbors. This is with, with others. This is how we need to start to think about things. Not that I am the master and he is supposed to be my um, someone that I am controlling him, but I am a master, but he is also a master. I am in the image of God. I'm feeling good, but also everyone else is with the image of God. So we need to respect them. Now, I'm not saying that if someone is really bothering you all the time and using you um, by this way, so giving me say, you, you may say, you know, um, do uh, nothing with yourself. No, no, no. You need to stand for yourself. But there's a difference between standing for yourself and bothering others because you're in the image of God. Because also your friend is in the image of God. Okay? So we see here in those two verses, very important. Let's please continue. Dan, is, are there any questions about those uh, things that I spoke now? If not, we'll continue. Dan, I lost you. I'm here. Uh, okay. <laughs> Everything is okay. Let's continue on. Now, Rabbi, I have a question about the abortion. What happens when the uh, medical authorities recommend a person, a woman, to have an abortion because if she continues with the pregnancy, she might uh, uh, die or put her life in danger? Very, very nice question. Very important question. Um, and what I'm going to answer now, I'm going to speak principally. I'm not going to speak for a specific uh, um, issue because those are very, very, um, I will say, uh, important questions that if there is something for practical question, you're supposed to ask the rabbis what to do. So I'm going to speak, okay? So if someone here will listen, especially that we're speaking on the internet and we know that there are um, sometimes even 200 people after that uh, looking on those they uh, um, listened. So I'm saying this very carefully. I will speak principally. If there is questions, please ask us and we'll deal with the question exactly what to do. But in principle, um, usually when there is life against life, okay? So the mother is more important than the child. A lot of times, um, the doctors, when they are saying things, they are just assuming, and this is why we need to check exactly what they're speaking about. We saw a lot of times they're just, you know, saying all sorts of things with the very careful things, but it's not close enough. And there are um, sometimes that the rabbis are saying, do a version, but it can't stay only on the medical level. The medical level is just giving all the details and the facts, okay? The moral level is supposed to be in the hands of the rabbis. This is where they're starting to do all the adjustment, exactly what and where and how. And there are, um, we can see that also in just, you know, a simple person, not abortions and things like that, when a lot of times the doctors from their experience and they're saying the exact things that they know. They're saying you have, uh, not you specifically, and God forbid it. Someone who is ill, they're saying to him, you have only three months to live. And at the end, this guy is living for 10 years. We know those stories, we know those things. It's not it's something new, okay? Or the opposite, vice versa. God forbid the things, okay, why? Because at the end, the doctors, and they're saying that more than once, they're not controlling life. They have all sorts of statistics. They know a lot of things, how the body is working. But the living, okay, and the dying, 
the, uh, the, you know, the bottom line, it's not in the hand of the doctors. So we need to be very careful. I know that there are places in the world, like in Switzerland, for example, where you can ask for dying and they will give you um, some sort of medicine or you know, some sort of poison and you, they will kill you. Um, we think that it's, it's, it's a horrible thing to do, okay? But again, the doctors, they're giving a lot of, I will say, uh, good and right things. In principles, they are not controlling life and death. So we need to do the definition, to have all the details, and I'm asking and saying, I'm saying, this is a principle, as a, uh, as a principle, it's very important. Go and speak with doctors, understand what's happening. And usually if you're getting um, something that uh, results or something that is not clear or you're not sure, go and take second opinion. It's very important to have also second opinion, not only to listen to one opinion, um, to have second opinion, to know what's happening. But remember, life and death are not in the words of the doctors. We have another very important thing, um, pray to God. Pray and speak with God. You know, God, he's doing also miracles from time to time. And the doctors are also saying those miracles. Again, I'm not, I'm not inventing here anything. We all already, I see with the faces here that um, we have here a lot of people that have, we call this an evil, um, you know, they're in the road of life already for a long time, but they know that those things happening like that. Okay, and he said, you're also in the road of life enough to know that you saw things like that in life. Therefore, we need to remember the doctors are saying very important things. We can't ignore that. But they are not deciding the moral decisions. Moral decisions, let's speak with the rabbis, okay? They are deciding the moral decisions. Thank wow. you, Rabbi. Excellent, excellent um, answer. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, that's a key um, point, Rabbi, isn't it? The, the moral questions, we need to keep that in mind. There's a lot of practical aspects that, we need to understand and, and, and manage. But when you're in a moral dilemma, a dilemma, and I think what uh, uh, Lisette's question was, was has to do with a dilemma. And exactly. you're facing something that is, uh, uh, needs a moral answer. And I think that that's clear what the rabbis are there to help for. And this is why you need to cling to uh, the hem of a, a rabbi for the moral decisions, not everyday guidance. Don't be harassing a rabbi saying, I need to know what step to take today or right now or every hour uh, of the day, <laughs> you know. So blessings, rabbi. Beautiful answer. Okay, fine. Um, please read this number seven. Uh, seven, and you be fruitful and multiply, swarm upon the earth and multiply thereon. Okay, so now it's also um, a God is blessing, and not only blessing, as you can see in, in, in Russian, okay, uh, because it's, it's coming, it's saying, repeating again something that we read already in verse number one. Please read verse number one. And God blessed Noah and his sons, and he said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. So I don't understand. The, the Bible, the, the Torah, um, is measuring every word that it says. And it's very, um, you know, it's very, very word is very important and everything else. And now we see in verse number one and in verse number seven, God is saying the same words, starting and opening, closing in the same words. So please read a uh, the commentary of Rashi. Okay, what's happening here? And you be fruitful and multiply. According to its simple meaning, the first mention of this expression, verse 1, was a blessing. And this mention is a commandment, according to its Midrashic interpretation. It is written here to compare one who does not engage in propagation to one who sheds blood. Ooh. Uh, okay. Uh, it's, it's, now we see it in the, in the number way. Uh, just a moment. Just a moment. Uh, I will explain to you in a moment why I stopped you. Um, now we see it in another way. So it, it, there are two things in it. One is a blessing. This is one thing. Now that we've learned already, I will say the, um, the importance of men that he is being um, in the image of God. 
Now we're starting to see that if you are not getting married and you're not trying to bring family, also with only two people, you know, trying to do something, you know, to continue on the next generation of Israel, this is also some sort of a way that you demolishing the image of God because more image of God were, could be here and you didn't brought it here to this world. Point of view. So it's not only blessing, like we saw in the first verse, but it's also some sort of a how to, um, it's a commandment, what to do. To do in the right way, because we want to bring here more life in, in the, to this world. Um, it's reminding me one, a, a very interesting way. Um, uh, let's look for more in, in the in the Jonah, okay? Um, you remember all Jonah, the story of Jonah? I want to show you um, an interesting verse in Jonah. In the Jonah was uh, the one that uh, God threw into the uh, mouth of the, what do you call it, to, to the whale, right? Remember that? You all remember that story? It's of very, course, Rabbi, yeah, very, wonderful. Uh, fine story, but I want to show you, um, um, where do we find it? Where do we find it? Here it is, here it is, here it is. Is it in Nevi'im? Yes. But why did I lost it? Ah, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's in Nevi'im. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just a moment. Um, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Jonah, you see, I want to share to share with you um, a very important uh, verse that is being written in Jonah. We know that Jonah, Jonah he ran away from God. By the way, how he can run away from God? You can't. <laughs> I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. But if you don't want to get prophecy, you go out from the Hebrew land. And this is what he did. He went out from the Hebrew land and he said, it's okay, I won't get the prophecy anymore. So God did a very long way and he threw him back to the Hebrew land. <laughs> and then he gave him again the prophecy. So you understood that he can't run away from God. Okay, fair enough. But we see here, um, please read verse number four. Uh, we need to read a few verses, okay? Uh, please read verse number four. Uh, five and six. Four. Now the Lord cast a mighty wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, and the ship threatened to be broken up. And the sailors were frightened, and each one cried out to his God, and they cast the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. And Jonah went down into the ship's hold, lay down, and fell fast asleep. And the captain approached him and said to him, why do you sleep? Get up, call out to your God. Perhaps God will think about us and we will not perish. Okay, so a few things I have to say here in this story. First of all, um, there is someone, someone here went once in the sea where the sea started to go up and down. <laughs> How can you go to sleep in this moment? You know, also only to see, I will say, um, in the movies, <laughs> how the ship is going up and down. How can you go to sleep? I don't know. I really don't know how Jonah went to sleep. And uh, But this is one point that we need to see here. The second point that I want to mention is uh, in the Hebrew, it's even written down better than that. Do you all remember that we spoke about this? that uh, God um, took Adam, uh, Adam was feeling alone, and God wanted to create Eve or to separate Adam from Eve. They were both together. So he went, he took Adam and he put him to sleep. Remember that? We never saw that God woke him up. I spoke about this once. <laughs> so here in this world, we are a bit in a dream. I'll say it like that. And this is what he's saying here. Why, why do you sleep? Get up. Get up. Okay? It's very important that we need to wake up. 
we can sleep. We can see a lot of people who are sleeping in this world. When I'm saying sleeping, they are awake, but they are not awakeness. <laughs> they don't, they are continuous, continuing with everything else, okay? If I will tell all of you, for example, that uh, I'm doing a Pagan uh, um, ceremony every week, I'm uh, taking myself in a very interesting place and I'm uh, taking my knee down in front of a very interesting torture, um, something of a torture, and for the son, that the name is Heb from uh, 3,000 years ago. And, and also I'm drinking and eating from this holy thing. So you will say to my, you will say to me that I'm, you know, I'm crazy. But uh, if you will think about this, a lot of people are doing something similar on Sunday, okay? For the cross, that was a torture thing. So people are still sleeping. That's it. This is the only explanation that I have to something like that. Because if you will say this in this way, they will say to themselves, no, I'm not doing this thing. If you will say this in a different way, they will say, how can you say those things against Jesus Christ, you know, something like that. So people are asleep. And this is what he's saying here. Wake up. Why do you sleep? Wake up. But it's continuing to another very interesting thing. Okay. Um, please read verses seven and eight before the answer that Jonah is giving. Seven. And they said, each one to his fellow, come, let's cast lots so that we will know because of whom this evil has befallen us. So they cast lots and the lot fell upon Jonah. And they said to him, tell us now, because of whom has this evil befallen us? What is your work and whence do you come? What is your land and from what people are you? Well, first of all, they're very fear. Okay. They're very fear. It says you already. Um, just a moment, you will see it also in verse 10, okay? Um, and the men, please read verse 10. I'm skipping on 19. And the men were very frightened, and they said to him, what is it that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from before the Lord because he had told them. Okay, so so the, the people here are very fearing with what's happening. And what exactly is he answering them? Please read verse number nine. It's very, very important because it's related to the things that we've learned in, uh, in Genesis in Ge this moment. And he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. I am a Hebrew. One of our oldest sages 1,000 years ago said that what exactly he's saying here, he's saying to them like that. You don't need to fear for me. Because I am from the Hebrew men, and the only thing that we know here in this world is how to do good to others and to try to bring more life. Those are the exact words that we spoke in Genesis a few minutes ago. This is what we, this is our mission in life. This is for, this is why you don't need to fear. And the story behind the scenes that we have in the middle here is saying that they took Jonah, okay? And they put him in the water. And when his feet were in the water, suddenly all the storm stopped. So they raised him up. And the storm started, started again. So they put him back. And it was until his, um, in the, yes. in the, all his foot was inside the water. And the storm stopped. So they raised him up. So the storm started again. And they had no choice unless sending him to the water. But in the next, next verses, they will say also, um, after everything that they you say, see verse number 16, at the end of the, oh, if you read verse 15 and 16. And they picked Jonah up and cast him into the sea, and the sea ceased storming, and the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and they made sacrifices to the Lord and made vows. Okay, so, so they really feared God after that. They suddenly saw God in front of their eyes. But we need to understand the word here, I'm a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord of heaven and the, and who made the sea and the dry land, who created everything, who is giving life. Therefore, my mission here is to give life. 
This is the answer of the Hebrew people along history, all over history, okay? With all of the programs that we had, with all of the Holocaust that we had, with everything else, the main thing that the Hebrew people are trying to do is to give life. You know where you see it? If you remember um, Lee, in the second time that we, Lee, I can't explain why. Hopefully next week I will explain to you why. Lee, at this moment, he can't um, be with us and he won't come tonight. In a moment, we will jump to the bridge along and we'll also learn a bit of bridge along because this is part of the things. I want to finish this uh, uh, part. If you remember, Lee brought a, a, a movie, a short movie of uh, four or five minutes of someone from Britain who said uh, that the Hebrew nation, um, they're coming from, and we, it's true, they're coming from all over the world, armies from the United States, from England, from other places to learn how we're doing that. So the Hamas, for example, in Gaza, they're taking the missiles from the homes of people because they know that we don't want to kill innocent people. And all the time they're very upset. How are we doing that? That we are managing, just that you will know the numbers, okay? In uh, Afghanistan, for example, where the American people fight in Afghanistan, Afghanistan, for each soldier that they kill, the American people killed, those are true numbers, okay? Um, and never mind how I know all those uh, numbers, okay? I won't say that. For every one soldier, of Afghanistan, okay, terrorist Afghanistan, that the English American people killed, there were five innocent civilians who also got killed. Now, in Gaza, in Gaza, for, <laughs> um, for every, it's, it's just the opposite way around, okay, for every um, a five, for every five, um, terrorist uh, people that they're killing, it is sometimes also one civilian is being killed. And they're coming from all over the world to learn how we're doing that. And we are, there are all sorts of ways, but we are very fear not to take life that you don't need to take. Now, the truth is that we know when we need to do the army skills, we, we're trying to do the best. And if there is any, there isn't any possibility. This is, you know, this is what we do. This is what we do. But uh, this is how the Hebrew nation is working. I can tell you that uh, we are called startup nation, and uh, we have here more than 500 um, companies from all over the world who are giving here um, the research part of the company or at least 10%, 20%, 50%, you know, the research part of the company with Hebrew people. We have seven different uh, areas of the um, high tech. One of them, and those are things that we know already from 20, 25 years ago, okay? I have friends in those fields. Um, for example, one of the biggest problems that uh, the medicine world had, the healthy world had, uh, all the surgeries that they had in the back of people. Because when you do a surgery in the back, only, you know, a small tiny bit of, of, of just a moment of, of, of not careful of the doctor, and the man can be paralyzed from part of the body to the end of the body. So they invented here, um, already 25 years ago, something how to reorganize that uh, those surgeries will be with machines of the high tech related with all sorts of, you know, combined few things, few pills. And uh, I think two years ago, three years ago, it was sold this uh, company with more than a billion do dollars. Okay, but this is only one thing. I can give you a lot of things that are related to the uh, medicine side, to the healthy side, to other things. The Hebrew nation, a long history is trying only to give life. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, of course, also in the Hebrew nation, it might be that you will find evil people. But if you look on the Hebrew people, a long history, you will see that this is the main thing of this nation. And it's all coming straight ahead from uh, those verses that we've learned 
in, in Genesis here, okay, where we saw that uh, in the image of God, uh, he made man. This is one why we are very, um, it's very important for us to save life, to have more life. And also where we read this verse, verse number seven, not only as a blessing like we saw in verse number one, but also as a commandment that we need to bring more life to, to this world. And when someone is all the time bringing life, he can't think how to take life. Okay, this is, it's not working together. Um, we finished here a subject. Okay, so verse number eight, we will continue next week. And if you're asking me, let's go to learn a bit from Brit Shalom. So we will continue a bit. I know that Dali can't come here. Next, next week, you will know why. Um, hopefully, it's only good things. Um, so, uh, Let's go to move to Brit Shalom, unless Dan, people have questions or something, so, so let me know. Yes, I would have a question, if I may. Um, yes, Michaela. Michaela. <laughs> okay. Michaela, Michaela, just a moment, okay? Yeah. A lot of blessing and a lot of uh, success with your big mission for Italy. 60 million people are waiting for you. <laughs> Let's continue on. May Hashem be with me. Thank you, thank you. Ben, I'm here. Yes. It's it's really a blessing. Okay, what happens to uh, those people that transgress such a commandment? Uh, the people who um, willing or not willing happen to kill someone else. So uh, should they do teshuva? What, what's the say? How can get how how can uh, they repair their transgression? You say. Uh, if I understand your question, okay, your question has a few levels <laughs> of a profound uh, steps. But if I understand your question, I understand that you're asking how someone who is taking life or someone who decided not to bring people, not to bring more life, how can they do repentance? I understand exactly your question. The answer is very simple, okay? I must say that you're not the, uh, first one that is asking this, and I, we already had questions like that from other people. The answer, I, I will tell you, the truth is, it's very sad sometimes to get a question like that from someone who is already um, 50 or 55 years old and can't bring um, kids and is regretting today that he didn't did it when he was young. The answer is to, um, to work on the field of education, because there are two ways how to bring life. One is to bring the body. This is father and mother bringing the body. And the other one is to change, I will say, or to bring the, to the right mindset, to the right uh, connection with God. So if you want to repair things, to do the right uh, thing, go and work on the field of education and bring people it's like a it's, it's the same like they will be burned from the beginning okay bring them to the right mindset teach people in the right way bring them to get more connection with god this is the way to do repentance for not bringing life but you're bringing new life to no way with me Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I will share this, uh, this teaching. Thank you. Not a problem. Okay. Um, Dan, are we moving to the bridge along? Oh, if you want. I mean, hey, I still have my, uh, my own digital copy. I mean, okay. uh, I don't know if anybody can see this, but yeah, this is what I put together when you did the final uh, rendition where I can click on whatever chapter. I don't know what chapter you're on. Uh, we uh, we just finished chapter one. We just finished the introduction, didn't we? We also finished chapter number one. Okay, so you want me to start reading chapter two? Um, yes, just a moment. I need to uh, upload also in mine because I don't have here the hard copy. Just a moment. No, I don't have it here. Just a moment. Let me okay. um, let me open just a moment also the copy for me. It's very important. Just a moment. 
Um, Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. I can start reading, Rabbi. Uh, yeah, you can start, you can start. Okay, you just tell me when to pause if you if you want to break in and, and teach anything. Uh, so, no, I'm, I'm telling you just here it is, it's opening, it is opening. Uh, maybe I will share the screen for a moment or so. I will do a share screen, just a moment. <laughs> I will surprise you for a moment. Uh, Dan, I think that uh, it would be nice if you can. Uh, if you will manage to. Can you see my screen? No, sir. I see you. Ah, and you can't see my screen? Just a moment. Let me no. share the screen. Just a moment. Share screen. Okay, Dan, I think it will be nice if you will manage to. Okay, please, you can oh, you read it. Oh, you got it in Chinese. <laughs> ah, it's a Chinese for you. You can't read it. Okay, fine, fair enough. Uh, so go I and can read say the ni English hao. <laughs> so go and read the English one. Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so we're chapter two, the uh, fundamental principles. And God yes. spoke, and God spoke all these words, saying, "Out of Exodus twenty, verse one, the will of the Creator is revealed to human beings through the conduit of prophecy. Two, the ultimate prophetic revelation is the giving of Torah from heaven by God. Three, whoever claims to be a prophet sent by God to instruct humanity must first be directed towards the sages of Israel in order to determine his authenticity." and the degree of obligation to listen to his words. For all mitzvah... Just a moment, just a moment, just a moment. One, two, three are very, very important uh, points, okay? And uh, this is one of the main biggest differences that we have between the Hebrew nation and uh, also the rest of the world. This is a very, very important point that we need to understand. And what is this important point? From where everything is starting, is everything is starting from my understanding, my knowledge, my uh, um, wish, my will, or is there anything much bigger from outside of the world? Let me explain this a bit more. Um, let's go for that. I think that you heard this, uh, this uh, example, but only you, so now it's a good opportunity to say this to everybody else. Let's go, for example, to the last um, um, vote that people had in the United States. There are very clear regulation and laws how to do this vote, okay? This is very clear. Everybody knows exactly how to do the votes, how to count the number, the, the, all the votes. Of Ballots, the yeah. side. Everything is very, very clear. If there is any um, claims against it, where exactly you go and you say your claims in what court and everything else. But let me ask, at the first time, not now, the first time that they did the votes and they decided how to do those votes, did they did it in this way? The answer is no. The answer is no. The first time that they decided how to do the votes, they stood, they cried, I don't know, they, they, they maybe they had a lot of arguments and everything else. At the end, they, I don't know, maybe they raised up their hands or something like that. And they decided how to do these votes. So the first time is an outside from the regular system. Right, Travis? The first time is a side that is deciding what to do in the, in the rest. Now, this is the, I think the closest explanation that I can give. God decided how this world and this nature is going to work. He created this world. The creation of this world is not how the world is functioning now. The world today is functioning in a different way where God created everything. He is an outside from this world. 
is not part of this world. When I'm thinking, Immanuel Kant, he was a great person. Believe me, till today, he broke down 1700 years of Aristotle in this world. Everybody thought in the way of Aristotle. Ken Kant, in a few years, managed to break down everything that Aristotle brought in this world. And until today, this is what's happening. We're thinking Kant, we're not thinking Aristotle. And one of the things that he said, everything here is in my brain. That's it, from beginning to the end. Between my ears, you know, there are people that if you will go inside to their heads and you will cut the string between the ears, the ears will fall down because there's nothing else inside. But in Immanuel Kant, there was a lot of brain inside. And he also said that the moral is supposed to come from his understanding. That's it. The Hebrew nation is not speaking like that. We're saying something else. We're saying that we got, we got from God, not from this world and the structure of this world. We got from the outside, the one who created this world. We got from him the understanding how to get connected with him. It's not that I'm going to invent it for myself. It's written down very, very nice in the Bible. Okay, in the Bible it's written down. Let's uh, go back to the Chinese and okay, let's leave the Chinese. I understand it's the Chinese, so it's, it's a bit uh, hard uh, for everybody, also for me. <laughs> um, it's written down here in the Utah uh, 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 Let's see if I'm finding it straight ahead. Okay, um, please read verses um, seven and eight. Oh, we need seven. to read a few verses, just a moment. Just a moment. Um, okay, please, so we're starting from seven and we're going to finish in verse number, um, in verse number 12, okay? So let's start it. Seven, for what great nation is there that God that has God so near to it as the Lord our God is at all times that we call upon him. And which great nation is it that has just statutes and ordinances as this entire Torah, which I set before you this day? But beware and watch yourself very well, lest you forget the things that your eyes saw and lest you these things depart from your heart all the days of your life. And you shall make them known to your children and to your children's children the day you stood before the Lord, your God at Horeb, when the Lord said to me, assemble the people for me, and I will let them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they live on the earth, and that they may teach their children. And you approached and stood at the foot of the mountain, and the mountain burned up with fire to the midst of heavens with darkness, a cloud, and opaque darkness. The Lord spoke to you out of the midst of the fire. You heard the sound of the words, but saw no image, just a voice. Very important to see that what Moses is saying here, that is, we are a great nation for two things. One is that we can pray for him. Okay. Okay. He's so near to us as the Lord, our God. Okay. Wherever we speak with him, we can call upon him. And he's listening to us. And the second thing is that he also gave us what are the things that we need to do to get close to him. Those are two ways or explanation why we are a great nation. And the second thing that he's saying to us, that we need to be aware and very careful and to watch ourselves and everything else about this thing that the Ten Commandments, where God said to us that he is going um, to speak with us and I will let them hear my words. And this is after that what we see, that we approach and stood uh, uh, next to the mountain and God spoke with us. God spoke with us in the midst of the fire and we heard him. We heard God who created this world. Again, go back to the um, example that I gave. 
It's not how the world is, the system is working now. Now we have the laws of, uh, of nature. It's not how the system is working now, how we are voting now. We're speaking about the creation, before the creation, the one who decided to create, why he created, and how we can get close to him, and what exactly is demanding from us. This is what we are starting with. And now we can read again the first uh, three um, uh, things that you said, okay? The first three again. The will of the creator is revealed to human beings through the conduit of prophecy. The ultimate prophetic revelation is the giving of the Torah from heaven by God. Three, whoever claims to be a prophet sent by God to instruct humanity must first be directed towards the sages of Israel in order to determine his authenticity and the degree of obligation to listen to his words. Okay, it says here very clear. It starts, by the way, with the first, with the first verse of, of the Ten Commandments that God spoke all those things. I'm sorry, this is the first verse, a verse of the Ten Commandments. And we need to know, first of all, we believe, we know, we, sh we saw, um, okay, we didn't saw this in the eyes, we heard it in our ears, that God is speaking with us through this prophecy. And this is not the words of a very smart person. Those are the words of God. And this is why, and here, Rabbi Shaki is very... Um, I will say um, he did it very in a small portion. I will say like that, okay? Because in, in in the statement number three, that when someone is saying that he's stating that he is a prophet, he needs to um, to have the exams of the rabbis. It's a very complicated exams. <laughs> it's not so simple. There are very complicated exams, but only the rabbis can say the authenticity. That it's true, it's true, this person is really a prophet. And the prophecy is something that unfortunately we don't have it in the last uh, 600 years, six, 20, 2300. 24, uh, 24 centuries. Uh, but we know that now that the Hebrew nation is coming back to their homeland, it will come back. And also, this will bring a different level to back to this world. So this is a very important principle that starts with, um, before we're starting to explain the seven uh, laws and also a bit more than that, because it's not only a wisdom of someone that decided to say those things, it's much more profound. I think, it's, I think we said a lot for tonight. So I have another five minutes. I don't know if you saw that. I've been called outside to the next uh, mission in my life, in my family. It's also part of the things. But I have uh, something like five minutes. If someone wants to ask something, to say something, um, or something else, please done. Reorganize what's happening now. Yes. Well, somebody put uh, up their hand if they got before, a question. Before, 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 before. And before I will forget, OK? Um, we have a lot of uh, people that we know one each other for a long time. And we have a few new people, and let me bless them to come with us and they, to participate, feel comfortable, always to be part of us, okay? From Norway, Anski, right? From Norway, Anski, this is your name? Anski? Exactly. See? Yes, from right? Norway, but living Norway. in Paraguay. Okay. And we have Norway from Paraguay also, you see? We have two Norways. And we have also Norway from Anna and, and everything else. So, first of all, blessing for everybody who comes. And now, again, if we have any more questions or something, please done. adjust everything. Yes. I, I see we have Joel James, uh, 989, uh, new with us today. Um, welcome. I'm not sure where he's from. Uh, and I see we're joined by Daniel down in Bogota and uh, the Hansons as well. Netzak, of course, over in uh, Czech Republic. Anybody have a question? Put up a hand. The Philippines. Yes, yes. yes. Yes, Travis. Travis. He's not muted, but we can't hear him. Yes. Sorry, I have two mutes, and uh, and uh, that's I had both of them off. Um, 
Uh, isn't it true that we've already had, we have our prophets and the prophets that have already spoken, they spoke of both past, present and future. Is it not? And that if we follow the Torah, and I know that I can, I don't know that everybody can, but I follow the Torah and along with the happenings in the world. And like uh, this week, uh, prophecy is in Torah, it's in the writings. And if you tie them all together, you can see you can't prophesy what's coming tomorrow, but you can see the truth in today that was written about years ago, thousands of years ago. And so uh, true, we're going to have visions and, and, and dreams in, in the time of Messiah. But uh, isn't it true that we already have our prophecy of the future and how we should be go walking toward the father so that we can curtail some of the judgment that's coming? And uh, I'm going to get off and let you expound on that a little bit. No, no, no. You're more than right. You're more than right. The prophecies before they shut down, okay? The TV of the prophecy, I will say it like that, before they close, the, you know, uh, today we have a TV 24-7. But there were times in the beginning that the TV was closed uh, around uh, 12 o'clock at night and was open again at 7. So the prophecy before they closed, the the um, the line of the prophecy, they also said to us a few things that will happen in our days when they will come back. Okay, this is the prophecy ability. And uh, it's true. You open your eyes, you see. For example, it says that the Hebrew nation will, become, will come back to their homeland and we see today that it's happening after 2,000 years. And the same more things that we can see um, eye to eye. Okay, how they are in the most exact way what is happening and how things are happening. And I think that this is also one of the reasons why we have today this theological um, crack. Um, I have an essay of six pages that was being draw, um, wrote down by a professor in some way in the East Europe to explain to me why the Christian world is going down and people are asking to learn more and more from the Hebrew people. But you know, we, we, it's, not, it's not surprising with what's happening. It's not surprising. Well, wasn't that part of the prophecy though that we would take the hem of the righteous Jew and, and walk with you? And so that's part of the prophecy is coming true in my opinion. Now it's just yeah. an opinion because I'm not a prophet. Uh, just read the word. This is more than true. Yes. Okay. Um, and you are all blessed here by being, you know, I will say, um, you are holding the future in your hand. This is how I can say it. Okay. Those people who are part of this uh, um, organization, everything else, you are, you are just touching the, the future. Um, you want to pay for from a lot of people. You are touching the future here in your hand. It's very good. Um, very blessing. Okay. Um, I think Timothy's got his hand up. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, did the prophets know something? Did they give up prophecy? Did they actually just give it up for some reason or something like that? When you say, when you say give it them up, what do you mean? Like, was there something that they knew was going to uh, happen that they gave up prophecy? Is that possible? Yes, yes, because they were in a different dimension. So the time wasn't related to them. We are in our world in a three dimension, okay? Basically, we know that we have more dimension than that. But in our dimension, we can't travel in time. Um, God is above those dimensions. And the prophecies are also above the dimension of time. Therefore, they saw things in, in this different dimension also without relation to the time that they were. So they saw some things that are happening today, even though they were living then. Thank, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Rabbi, I, I was under the impression, or I've read, and I, and I have to confirm this so I can show you somewhere, and I'm sure you're fully aware, but I, I was under the impression prophecy is not fortune telling. Okay. It's not foretelling the future. From what I understand from the rabbis, it had a lot to do. 
with warning and uh, admonishing. There was a directive to the Hebrew people. You know, they have a mission. They, they were created for a purpose and for a mission. So the prophets would admonish them towards that mission and give them warnings of what may happen if they don't, you know, turn around. And, and you know, it's just like the rabbis are talking about repentance often, teshuva, doing teshuva often. And the, the piety of, uh, of a holy person, somebody would walk with Hashem and, and strive to have that degree of piety, but it was Hashem that determined if the, the, the words of the, the, the sons of the prophets back in uh, the time of Elisha, they, they actually had a school, the sons of the prophets, and, and they were trained in intellectual virtue. They were trained in uh, what intellectual flaw was. And it was a flaw to think you could ever attain intellectual virtue. Uh, but they were also, you know, in a few other things, they had a fourfold. But they would they would strive for piety. They had to have piety. And if, if, if they walked with God properly, Hashem would let their words be used as prophecy, and they would determine it. And, and, and this is where the rabbis come into play. Like he read in the first three here of, of, uh, of, the, uh, of the Brit Shalom, it, to go to the rabbis to see if the prophet was uh, a prophet or the degree of his prophecy. And I think uh, Rabbi Shirky had it very, very clear. Uh, the school of the prophets raised them up in, in, in training and in intellectual virtue. They weren't the local uh, uh, fortune teller. Um, and in understanding the dichotomy uh, of the mind, it just thinks they're going to tell the future. It's not the point. They're going to uh, warn and they're going to uh, encourage, especially the Hebrew people, towards back towards the mandate, towards the task, towards the vision. I think that that's what Rabbi Goldberg has mentioned, uh, um, and and they have a, a you know a purpose for being, and um, a, a true holy person is always going to do that to his friend or someone they love. They're going to you know warn if you go down that path, you're gonna you're gonna run into this 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 and this, uh, and they would encourage them in in a proper direction, usually towards something that would be fulfilling to them. But the but the Hebrew people have that special uh, birthing as a nation to be to be a, a holy people for this reason of being a kingdom of priests, and this is why it all comes together that way. Am I incorrect on this, Rabbi? No, no, no. In saying uh, right things, we learned this uh, in the Kuzari, and we spoke about this more than once, you and me. And it's true. The 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 prophet is not coming to say all the time the future. This is not the main thing. The main thing of the prophet is, as you said, to say the direction that you're supposed to do as a Hebrew people. By the way, the prophets also spoke not only with the Hebrew people, they spoke also with other nations. We can see this in a lot of uh, prophets, or we can see this in Cheskel, we can see this in uh, Shia, we can see this in Je Jeremiah, we can see this in other prophets also. Jonah, Jonah was a prophecy, not for the Hebrew people, only for others, you know, for Nineveh and others. Um, so, uh, but the prophecy was, as you said, um, when I have a, a true friendly connection with someone and I see that he's going to do a wrong thing that will harm him, I will stop him. I will do my best that he won't do the bad, the bad things or won't do things that will harm him. And this is the same thing. The prophecy, uh, the prophecy people, they wanted very much that the Hebrew people their nation will do the right thing. And they said to them, if you will go on this path, this and this and this will happen. And if you will go on this path, this and this and this will happen. Now, because of that, the prophecies also said to them, even if you will go on this path and they will go to the exile and everything else, at the end, this and this and this will happen. Okay, the good things. And this is what we have today. So the prophecy is more to, as we spoke before, the prophecy is to have the connection with God. So when you have a moral question, you're going to the prophecy and you're consulting with him what exactly is the best way to act, to behave. Today, we don't have the prophecies, okay? So we're going to the rabbis. But uh, this is the main thing of the prophecy. <laughs> you know, I have a moral question and I want the help, the assistance of the word of God. And this is why also the prophecies didn't have any 
fear to go to the king and to tell him, don't do this, do that. Because they, they really had um, the mission of God. And by the way, also, they managed to sneak, I will say, from time to time also, the vision what will happen after that, in the future. Um, and he's saying uh, the right things. And this is also one of the obligations that we have where, because we have um, the obligation that we feel with others, our friends and others. This is why we also um, want to spread the word outside to others. Um, wow. I, I need to finish. I'm sorry, I need to finish tonight. Um, hope to see you all next week. Um, was as usual great and pleasure. Now next week's Hanukkah, Rabbi. Yes, but if it's okay with all of you, we're going to meet. <laughs> it's it's a. I will I will manage to sneak outside from the, my family for. You know, Rabbi. Maybe we can. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can make sure next week that the chat box is uh, is yes. lively. Uh, and if Lee can't make it, maybe I I would nominate uh, maybe uh, Travis or somebody to monitor the chat box or something. Somebody transition past you so that questions are being asked. I don't want to stifle the, the 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 interaction, but I also don't want to see excitement for demand to get up there and be heard. Uh, squash the more humble. Uh, um, you know, less forward folks, you know, and let their questions well, be answered. So. You're more than right. We'll fix this until next week. I thought that it's already been fixed, but I will, uh, if my technical people won't be able to fix it, well, as you said, we're going to give it to Tony. So you want to say something, Tony? Yeah. yeah um, first off, uh, Joe, Joe James has a question. He's got his hand up. Um, if people would um, open their uh, participants window, it'll pull up a little screen on the right and you can raise your hand. Uh, hello, good evening. Uh, good morning from Pakistan. Wow. Welcome. Uh, Welcome. Welcome. I'm very happy to see you all. I was actually looking all the participants and uh, I'm really very happy to see you all. Uh, one faith, I have no any question, but I want to just uh, tell, tell something about uh, uh, myself about our ministry here in Pakistan and about the work just in two minutes. Rabbi, if uh, you've got to go. Last... Um, so, uh, Dan, I'm passing you the... I'm, I'm passing Tony. I, I don't see you, Dan. Dan. Dan, where can I see you in the participants? Well, I'm still up there, Rabbi. Um, I'm listed as oh. broadcaster. Uh, yes, 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 I can see that. So I'm bringing you, just a moment, I'm passing you the, now you're going to be the host, and I'm going, okay, I'm, I'm missed, I need to leave, so I'm sorry, but uh, I will listen to what you said here after that, and you'll have a few more minutes without me, okay? See you all, Hello. bye. Yeah, continue, Joe, bye, uh, bye. Joe James. Bye, bye, bye. Thank you, bye-bye. Joel. Joel James, uh, yeah, yes, continue. Yes. yes. Uh, I, I was saying that I'm very happy to see you all. And uh, uh, here in Pakistan, uh, though we are so far from each other, but in faith with God, we are very close and we are from one descendant. And uh, we have one father like God and we are all his son and daughters. I'm really very happy that uh, I have uh, very good brothers, good sisters, and uh, I was saying all of you, and you're all looking very well, cute, and beautiful. Thank you, Lord. Secondly, I am here in my church leading my youth, boys, and uh, before two days, I conducted a Christmas party with my youth and we really enjoyed very much uh, the incarnation of Jesus and uh, whoa, 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 uh, whoa, I whoa, want whoa. to uh, it ain't the place for it. this ain't the place yeah, no we, we don't we don't we, we don't, don't, don't talk we don't about uh, uh, Christianity here hmm? okay 
Anybody else got any questions? So or, I'm or, or I wanna... that I'm very happy. That... Okay. We appreciate. Uh, 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 Thank you so much. God bless you. Bless you too. I mean, we're so glad you joined us. Uh, uh, but most of us, we've all come out of, a lot of us here, especially in the West, have come out of Christianity. And yes. um, yeah, in coming out of Christianity, you know, we have uh, seven uh, mitzvot that we follow with with the Hebrew people. They're teaching us to follow seven uh, uh, mitzvot, and and one of them has to do with uh, uh, idolatry. And so there's some questions there, and so we don't want to. Uh, uh, we want to tutor or be a part of helping the nation see clearly. So um, when it comes to uh, uh, Christianity, I'm not going to drop the hammer or anything of that nature. It just, it's not, uh, it's not what we're about. Um, we don't follow uh, the same. Uh, uh, we don't see in Jesus. We don't see uh, uh, divinity. Okay. Um, yeah, it is just, it's not there. We follow, uh, the teachings of the rabbis. Um, but and, we'll, uh, I love Hebrew people and we are praying mm. for all the Hebrew people and uh, for all Israel. We love Israeli people. Well, altruism is great. Um, it's wonderful to have you with us. Is anybody else got anything they want to share? Dan Harish Kimball's got a hand up. Harish. Yes, Dan. I'm uh, sorry for joining in late. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not going to forgive you because we're like that. <laughs> I'm kidding, you know. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to ask that, you know, I saw one of your videos. I had I have two questions, actually. One is pertaining to the video which you posted that you won't be broadcasting something I uh, I didn't quite Yeah, understand. Zoom Room. I don't want to do Zoom Room. I don't want to do any more Zoom Room. But it's a balance. It's a balance. I want to do some better quality broadcasting, some some high-end stuff. You know, I'm talking, I'm going to spend some time with Tony and Cole and a few others. I'm going to open up a class, actually. Um, I'm just working on a bunch of stuff in my free time for, for their new class. Uh, they've been doing a weekly Parsha and prayer service. It's just awesome. Rabbi Goldberg wants to go down that road. And the, we want to see the people connect with the rabbis. And the Zoom room is just wonderful for it. Um, but I want to be able to put together content in a highly, almost televisable quality so that people can watch it at their leisure when they have time. And um, Zoom rooms are, are the perfect setting for classes, especially during COVID, but they're not ideal like a classroom. When you're in a classroom, you know you get to interact with someone, right? You can you can meet your friend. You know, you can do that, but you can also put up your hand. In a Zoom room, it's hard to see all the hands, no matter how many we have uh, in there. To, you, you can't show 60 people on the screen all at once. And so, you know, the rabbis need to use the Zoom room tool, okay, to connect with the students. And I don't ever want to stifle a student. I don't ever want to stifle a student. And uh, But my, my gifts and strengths, uh, you know, I, I've won several film awards, and, and I love to work with the CG animation and, and um, I love to take the time to do good quality stuff. I don't want to rush anything. When you're dealing with a lot of people, everybody wants to have, well, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. And it takes time. Like I can't spend, I can't do 120 hours worth of work in, in six hours. It just doesn't happen. And so uh, there's a lot of behind the scenes planning. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm in talks with a couple others, you know, uh, to do some more broadcasts out of Israel. And, I got to divert some of my time, but I'm, I'm also, I want to do this class where I can train a bunch of people that in English, where they'll be able to understand how to work with the OBS uh, uh, software and be able to set it up and actually start to broadcast. And I, and I'm hoping that within a year, you know, because I'm, I, I may expand to be able to broadcast to more and more and more platforms simultaneously uh, later this month. But um, I would love to see more people doing it uh, and, and understand how to do it. And then I, I'm pretty confident that in a year or so that Rabbi Goldberg's going to probably have to have somebody else doing, uh, the zoom room classes. And I don't want to do it. It's not that I don't want to be around the class. I, you know, Rabbi Goldberg's my, my, my rabbi, him and I started doing this a few years back. 
I think that you all have skills and I've met some beautiful B'nai Noach that have, you know, lots to share. And to, in order to get those, those local communities starting to flourish, you got to have more people doing that. We can't just all, it's all great to come and meet together at one class, but there's limits to it as well. And uh, it can cause a degree of confusion, especially, you know what it's like where heavy populations are, right? It's tough to hear one voice through, through a crowd, right? And I don't want to disturb anybody's learning curve, but I also don't want to see, especially those that are less forward, those that are shy, never get a voice heard because they're shy. And if they they need the rabbi's uh, guidance as much as anyone. And um, I'm not a rabbi, so, you know, I, I, my skill set is, is with uh, CG and uh, that's computer-generated graphics. And I want to be able to help them grow in that uh behind the scenes, but they're the ones shining the light of, of Torah. And I want to be able to showcase some series so that those that grow, when you grow from a beginner to an intermediate and even to advance, you need to know, okay, here's a chunk I can, I can learn from it's eight series. Maybe some of you can be addicts and go all day on one, like binge watch. And, and then there's others that'll learn over weeks. So I want to get that stuff out to the people not become a slave to working 60 hours a week, just, just, you know, putting out zoom rooms. Um, there's, if more people were doing it, uh, showing how to set up a simple backdrop and then, and you got a hundred people, a thousand people, 10,000 people doing zoom rooms, you're going to have millions of people all connecting together. And that's the whole purpose. I hope that makes some sense. Yeah. So, uh, I wanted to ask, uh, what do we? What are the new rules for our Zoom class? Well, I thought Lee Fogel was going to be on uh, to do Brit Olam tonight, and he was going to keep the chat room open. Okay. And um, you know, so like Tony just mentioned, the hands come up there. See, I, when I show this this hand on here, everybody in the yes. broadcast see, sees it. So out on YouTube and, and Facebook, they can see. I want to be able to keep that closed. Right. I mm -hmm. want to be able to keep that closed and so that nobody sees it so that I'm showcasing, a, 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 you know, a center uh, piece. Uh, the rabbi should his teaching should be the center piece. So so, you know, when it comes to I don't know if you've ever watched any movies or television series, uh, good quality broadcasting has steady streamed audio it has constant motion as far as backdrop. It keeps a degree of entertainment. And it's only trimmings, I hate to say it, but in the public media setting that we're using, the social media setting, I hope if you've ever seen a flashlight or a lamp, a, ca a lamp, a, f a flicker of light, you know, if you put a lamp over it, like an oil lamp, it just brightens it. And so I want to be able to do that with some CG artwork and showcase classes but sometimes I will spend a uh, hundred to 200 hours behind the scenes setting something up for like when we did that 27th of Hesvan event, I had, mm, I'm going to say 140 hours behind the scenes setting that up, not counting former animations that were designed years ago. Uh, you know, so that's 140 hours and you do it for free. I've been doing it for years for free. I'm not a slave. Um, you know, but I want to serve, uh, Hashem, Hashem. I want to serve Hashem and the light of Torah isn't, isn't mine to give. I can, I can share about what I know about it, but it's not mine to give. That's the rabbis, you know? And I, I listen to someone like people like, like, like Travis here has spent a lot of time close to rabbis. He studied a lot of Torah in a different vein than I have. And yet you can tell he's, he's there's knowledgeable stuff. There is beautiful stuff there that is, is deep and rich. And we want to be able to get all these connections to grow. And, and we're not able to do it in this COVID world, this current COVID world. But the Zoom room setting is perfect for certain things, but it's not perfect for, for great quality broadcasting. And I want to be able to, to take my skills and use them where they're strongest, not use them where, they're, not, not use where they're, they're, you know, buffering uh, weak, weak, weak broadcasting. And I'm not saying that, you know, anybody can pop a Zoom room, get up there and talk on social media, right? Um what gives it punch? What gives it authority? You know, and the, the authority we all know comes, comes, you know, from the rabbis. And I'd love to see the world slowly shift it from, from the rabbis to the rabbis in Israel. 
uh, and and in Jerusalem, I mean, you know, Mashiach's gonna gonna be, you know, the, the prophecies are all there in Israel and in Jerusalem, uh, and we know things are gonna go that way. And uh, not to not to take away from the rabbis that are abroad, uh, I look at somebody like Rabbi Tovia Singer, who was the the, the chief rabbi in Jakarta. For all, he did he did his number of years, and soon as he finished his term, back to Jerusalem because that's where his heart is and he wants to you know shine from there and everybody uh, I've not met many Noahides that don't like Rabbi Singer Rabbi Singer is just phenomenal um but here's the deal and I think I said that in this video there's a lot of higher end rabbis out there folks there's a lot of really higher end rabbis and they have their own internal structure where rabbis consider their they have their own rabbis and then those rabbis have rabbis above them and you know there's certain rabbis that will not they will not do an open open mic broadcast. They just won't do an open mic broadcast because it, you're sticking your neck out in doing a public media broadcast. You're sticking your neck out. You have all the room uh, to say something that could be mistaken, taken in error, uh, 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 understood in error, even though it wasn't you know said in, in context. And then you get a lot of trolls and arguments, you know, but the Noahi World Center is just going after this for what it is and doing it, you know, in pockets around the globe to see this network come together and actually become a people, not just a people, not a separate religion. What the Hebrew nation's uh, purpose is fulfilled. And we're just part of the 70 nations helping fulfill that, that you know, when God created Abraham uh, to make a great nation out of Abraham to be a, a blessing to the other nations, where are the other nations? And um, the Torah and what Rabbi Goldberg, it's just beautiful material. And I know Rabbi Goldberg doesn't have the best English. I almost wish I could just hear him speak in Hebrew and understand it because his fluency in Hebrew, he's a very, he's probably the, his, his kindness is monumental. It's just, it's, it's caring, it's real. And with me, I see when he's thinking and he's trying to do the English translation in his mind and he says a word, it's usually a great word. And there are better English rabbis out there that are better orators, uh, but Rabbi Goldberg's the real deal. The real deal, when he left uh, teaching, he went right back to Israel and plugged right in with the Noahide World Center and Rabbi Cherky. And people don't know this. Rabbi Cherky, Cherky his, his rabbi, his rabbi was the grandson of one of the earliest, uh, the chief rabbis in Israel when they were reformed as a nation. So, so understanding their hierarchy and their chain, it, it plays a big role. And I'm talking way too much. <laughs> I'd like to confirm what you're saying there man, about the rabbis, if you get around them. Uh, like uh, my, my, my major rabbis were Levi. They were actually Levite uh, in Chabad is where I got started. And to hear them speak in English or in Hebrew, it's like it, it, it's music to the ears. It's so soft. It, it's loving. It's caring. Um, that's why I go to the rabbis. There's no harshness in them. And, and uh, I, I love the way that you put that. Anyway, I've got to get out of here. I got chores to do. And uh, Shavua Tov to everybody. Thank you very much. Anybody else got any, anything yeah. you want to say? Hi, um, Anna. Yeah, I'm just so I just want to say something to Joel. Uh, Joel, do you hear me? Joel James? Yes. Uh, Joel, uh, I was once uh, just like you. I was a Sunday school teacher and Bible teacher, the Bible study teacher before I was a Christian. And uh, I just want to suggest something to you. Uh, if you want to know what uh, Noahide is all about, I suggest to you to watch the videos of Rabbi um, Skobak. Uh, Michael Skovak, and um, the, the big biggest starting point for me was when I watched the debate of Rabbi Yusef Misrahi uh, in YouTube. So Rabbi Tobias Singer also have a lot of um, videos. So if you are willing, you can watch it. Then you probably understand the, what uh, Noah Hyde is all about better. And you, we're glad to have you. We're glad to have you. Don't ever yeah, feel and, we uh, just yeah. We don't we don't talk about uh, Christianity here. I want to learn more about uh, the Old Testament. Yeah, yeah. The Hebrew so, people if, and Israelis. Almighty God. Prepared. We we try to talk about Almighty God. Hashem. The word Hashem means the name. Yes, Almighty God. And yeah. um, 
yeah, you stick around. You, I think you'll find it's beautiful. Name. Does anybody else have anything they want to say before I shut it down? Okay. I'm going to close it down while you're talking on YouTube and Facebook. Can you uh, send me the link of video? Um, can you see my email address? There?